What's going on YouTube? Thanks for checking out my channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to go around and identify the outlets and the lights and which breaker they are connected to in your breaker panel. Thanks for tuning in. If you have not already, please subscribe down in the button below. So when you go to do electrical work, i.e. if you're changing out a light switch, if a plug has an issue and you're trying to diagnose it, or even if you're trying to add a circuit, or even if you're trying to add an outlet to a room or somewhere else, let's say you want to add an outlet behind a TV, you'll need to go to your breaker panel and identify where this is connected to in your breaker panel. However, if your breaker panel is unlabeled, this can be very difficult as in it was in my case because only three of about the 20 to 30 breakers in my panel were actually labeled. A lot of times it was easier just to turn off everything in the breaker panel instead of just finding that one circuit that needed to be turned off. So in this video, I'm gonna actually go and show you how I went about identifying the breakers in my panel and what they were connected to. And this is in particular, the ones that do not have labels. There is a warning with this is that if you are not familiar or comfortable working around electricity, this is best done by a professional. However, if you have some familiarity with electricity, then you can do this yourself. The tools that you'll need to complete this task are a non-contact voltage tester or a voltmeter, a notepad and a writing utensil, whether it be a pen or a pencil. Now you can do this task by yourself as I did. However, if you have somebody that can help you that actually does all the running around or can be inside of the building to identify which lights turn on and which lights turn off, that would be far easier than you having to go from panel back inside to figure out where it is and then go back to the panel and then go back in again to try to identify which lights or outlets have turned on or turned off. So let's begin. So first thing I did, of course, is go to the breaker panel and open it up. As you can see, my breaker panel is actually outside. Initially, when I did this, I turned off all of the breakers only to realize later on that some of the breakers are not wired up. Um, in more modern electrical panels, there's usually a main breaker at the very top. However, for some reason, the main breaker in my panel is right along in series with the rest of the breakers. So when I turned everything off and would try to turn on only one breaker at a time and go back inside, none of the stuff would work. So this is my non-contact voltage tester. It's also a voltmeter. And so by turning everything off and then tapping everything up to the breaker panel, I can confirm that there was no electricity in the breaker panel. And then I can go over to the meter and of course the meter can't be turned off without the usage of the power company. And so I was able to confirm that the non-contact voltage tester was working correctly. So then the next thing was to go around through and identify each of the various devices. And then once I've verified each one, then I would go and write that one down with the number of the breaker, the amperage, and then what that breaker was connected to, or at least what I could identify that that breaker was connected to. And so this is basically, you just walk up to it. If you have the non-contact voltage tester and you just tap the, put the voltage tester near the wires that come out of the particular device or appliance. And if it makes a noise, then you know that it's working. If it doesn't, you know that that breaker that you switched off is what that is connected to. And then you just make a note of that. So some circuits are actually connected all together across multiple rooms. So this is an example of what is known as a lighting circuit. And basically all the circuits or all the items on a given breaker are connected to permanent lights. So if you flip a breaker off and all the lights in multiple rooms turn off at the same time, that means that breaker is a dedicated lighting circuit. So modern design dictates that you have a lighting circuit in place. And the reason that you want to have a lighting circuit in place separate from your outlets is because let's say you plug in something and that particular item has a fault in the wiring within the device itself. 
by having the ability to have the lights on a separate circuit from the outlet if this happens let's say this happens at night when you trip the breaker the lights in the room will still be on the overhead lights or permanently mounted lights will still be on and so it allows you to be able to get out of the room safely because you can still see because those lights are on a separate circuit from the actual outlets now older houses may not be wired this way uh in the original when they started doing electrical wiring in houses they would actually wire up the entire room on a single breaker so if anything in that room cut off you knew which breaker that that was connected to however more modern design as i previously mentioned is the outlets are on separate breakers from the permanently mounted lights so i went into my breaker panel and there were some items that were not actually responding when i flipped off and on the breaker so what I'm doing now is actually taking off the front place on the breaker panel. And so you'll want to be careful when doing this. Make sure you don't touch anything on the inside. And it took a little bit of effort to get mine out since mine actually is recessed inside. Some breaker panels actually have the front face mounted on the out outside so it doesn't actually slide off. It's just more like a, that of an outlet plug. So if you notice here where this arrow is pointing, this breaker is actually not connected. And so this is one of the breakers that when I flipped it off, it didn't do anything and I didn't know what it was connected to. So I opened it up and sure enough, it didn't do anything because it's not connected to anything. And this may be the case with some of your breakers in your panel. If you've had or somebody else who has lived there before you has done some remodeling and remove some of the wiring then or made adjustments to the wiring then this may be the case in your scenario so just be sure to not touch any any wires inside of the panel if you are checking to see if breakers are connected then all you have to do is reinstall the panel and in my case i actually lost the screw that holds the face in place so i actually had to go and buy another screw from the hardware store it came in a pack of six so i only needed one but i have five extra screws just in case i do that again in the future so once you have identified all of the breakers that you have in your box and what they are connected to then you can go and create a spreadsheet with this information so that it can be printed out so i'm going to start by using the first column as the breaker number and then followed by what that breaker is connected to. So the description and then the amperage. And if you notice that I'm using uppercase letters for this entire spreadsheet, that will make it easier to read. So I'm going to do the left side of the breaker, which is all of the ones that are odd numbered. Starting with the top down, you have one, and then all the way down to however many breakers that you have in on that particular side. So on my odd side, the breaker number, the highest breaker number is 25. So I will stop at 25. And then I will start with the even numbers of two, four, and six. And I will select that and then use autocomplete to end at 26, which is the highest number that I have on the right hand side. So the first breaker that I have in the number one position is the bath outlets as well as the exterior outlets and so i'll enter that in and then i'll also include the amperage which is 28 and then i will go to the next one which is not connected so i'll just note that is not connected and then i will put in 28 as the amperage because that's what it is the next two are the air conditioner compressors or connected to the air conditioner compressor. So I will note that, and then I will just copy and paste this one back in again. And then I will continue this process. And then once I get all the way filled in down to 25 and print this out, I will actually cut this between rows 14 and 15 and i will actually add another header here on row 15 so i will insert an entire row and then copy this header here 
so that, and I can add, add actually add another row so that I have some spacing in between. So when I do go to cut this, I don't have to be very exact with my cut. And so cut this between here and then so I have the even breakers on one side and then, excuse me, the odd breakers on one side and then the even breakers on the other side. Now, if you have a panel where the door opens sideways, you could actually move these cells over so that they are side by side like this. And that way you can better see and then you only have to use one set of paper or one printout to do this. However, since my breaker panel actually opens up instead of to the left or to the right. I'm going to do this way and split it sideways so I can put them side by side on next to the breakers in the space in between the edge of the breaker and the edge of the panel and the breaker itself. So for the cells that are really long like this one and these here, what I'm actually going to do is do this entire column and set it to do word wrap. So go to in LibreOffice Calc, you just go to text and then wrap text under the format menu and then you can resize the column and the text will resize accordingly. And so I'm gonna actually shorten breaker number to just breaker and that way it'll allow me to use less room here. And I can, you can actually even abbreviate it if you want to use more space. And so I do have one breaker here that is a arc fault or ground fault uh, tolerant breaker. And so for that particular breaker, I actually labeled it in the amps column that it is an arc breaker, as you see here. Um, you can do something similar or you can note it under the description of that is an art breaker is to clearly distinguish it from the remaining breakers that are located there. And so for some reason, this cell did not wrap correctly. Let's see if we can undo this. And so you may have simple formatting issues that come up like this. You just have to go in and double check them. And if worst case, realign the row to get it to do right, as you see here, now it's doing correctly. Now, I, I in some places, used abbreviations to try to help with the wrapping. So for instance here, instead of spelling kitchen out, I just took out all of the vowels that were in the word kitchen. And so you get something here that resembles the word kitchen so that you still know what it is. So this one in particular is kitchen counter. So counter is normally C-O-U-N-T-E-R. I took out all the vowels yet again. So you have C-N-T-R. You can kind of figure that out just, you know, reasoning. And same thing here with front. Um, as you see, it's not fully showing the whole description wrapping correctly. So, but same thing here with front, you kind of wrap it around and so forth. And so I will also do the headings on this one and make those bold. So, you know that those are there. And then if you want to, you can actually make these rows alternate colors. So it's easy for you to read. Um, so that's something I will do. I won't do that on video, but it's pretty straightforward. You know how to just select the background color of a particular row. And now that one is orange. And so I can alternate between orange and green so that I can clearly read all the way across which row, you know, which item it is. So if I'm looking for, let's say the dryer, I can identify dryer and I can go across here and say, okay, well, dryer is 30 amps. I can locate dryer based upon the amperage or I can locate it based upon the position in the breaker box. And once you have completed this, be sure to save a copy of this. And the reason I say that is because in the future, if you happen to add breaker outlets or you change something, let's say you add an outlet in a new room or you add an additional light in a new room, then you know you can go here instead of retyping this all the way over, you just make that necessary addition and then reprint it back out and stick it back in your breaker box. I'm also. So I've added grid lines. Instead of using the coloring technique, it'll be far easier to read. Just follow your line of finger across 
the line. And then I've also included the date of this last update. And that way, you know, if somebody comes along in the future, they won't have to guess when this was last updated. They'll be able to see clearly in the dates when this was last done. So they know if anything has changed between this date and the current date of whenever they're looking at it, then they can reprint this out and put an updated label inside the breaker box. So as you see, I've completed the printout of the stuff that I was going to do on the computer with the labeling. Then I've covered it in mailing tape as my breaker panel is outside. Hopefully this will protect it against the weather and any other elements that may come in contact with the labels. I have a copy of this saved on my computer so that I can go in and print out additional labels in the future if needed. If I need to make any adjustments, I can make those adjustments on the printout and then print them back out again. Hopefully this process has helped you in identifying and labeling your breaker panel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. If this video has helped you, please give this video a thumbs up. This may or may not work. <laughs>